Many of us don't have the luxury of a dedicated home office and working remotely isn't as desirable as it sounds when you have to work in the space where you sleep or a share a living room space with your family. I am lucky enough to have a guest room in the house where I perform all my creative work from filming and production to architectural design and running an e-commerce business. And I wanted to show you how I've optimized this modest space without sacrificing a bedroom with a queen size bed. This is all very possible with some smart planning and space saving strategies. So make sure you check out some of these items in the description below if you want to incorporate them in your own home. This video is sponsored by Hexco Studio. More about that later. Before we dive into what's in the office, I wanna give you a sense of what the physical characteristic of this room is like for context. So this is one of the three bedrooms that we have in the home. It's a standard bedroom size, so it's not particularly big. It has a modest footprint of 10 feet by 12 feet wide with a small built-in closet. And it's carpeted, which is nice for when I'm recording, and it's painted this sort of off-white color that has a decent sized window facing east that brings in an adequate amount of daylight during the day when I'm working. So given this room is the only place in the house where I can work in, I needed to be smart about how to best optimize this little space to get the most out of it. So it needs to be a place where I can film for YouTube content, a place to teach content life, a home office with equipments that I need to perform architectural and interior design work, and also a place to run an e-commerce Etsy store that houses my supplies and products. And lastly, it needs to stay as a functional bedroom for when we have guests over. So naturally, this is sort of a design challenge, but an interesting one. Not only do I have to fit in all these different criteria in, I also have to make it so that it's in harmony with one another and it can't be cramped into a space without any space to walk on, right? And given my filming needs, the place where I produce online tutorials is the most important criteria among others. It made the most sense to me to position my desk, my overhead camera, my mic, my talking head camera along this side of the wall which allows me to have a nice empty space behind me for a curated backdrop. I didn't want the first thing that I see when I enter the office to be the desk and I didn't want to have the backdrop overlooking my closet doors. So this is really the best wall for camera setup in my mind. Also for filming, one of the most important pieces of equipment is lighting and the quality of the light. So behind me is a really strong key light with a big softbox that can render a really soft look in the view. And this is really the only light that I need to both light my face and the desk area where I do tutorial demonstrations. There's actually another light that's tucked behind the wall there. And that light is really turned on for ambient illumination when I'm not filming. I have it set at a pretty low color temperature, so it does provide a little bit of warmth during the day. On most days, I use two cameras, one for the kind of talking head video shots that you see on YouTube already, and the other one is used for demonstration. And that's provided by an overhead camera mounted on a C stand behind me. And this overhead camera has a variable lens, so it's going to allow me to zoom in and out, which is great. For a couple hundred dollars, this is a great upgrade to using your iPhone, which I used in the earlier days of recording. My audio comes from this standalone microphone attached to a mic arm mounted on the desk. The video and the audio is then combined in post-production. And because the room doesn't have any sort of a sound treatment besides the carpet, this kind of microphone can afford me to have that sort of a professional sounding quality that you would hear on a radio and it's really good at cutting out outside noises. As you can see in many of my overhead tutorials, I typically like to have some decors and objects next to my iPad. So that could be a piece of wood or a tile that I have from my project to add a little bit of warmth and richness to the composition. So it's not overly sterile to look at. Now you've seen the kind of camera, lighting, and audio setup. I wanna show you what's actually on the desk. You can see I have a really long standing desk behind me. It's actually from the office where I used to work at. So when they moved out to a different location, they gave away all their standing desks, which I inherited one of them. Uh, the great thing about this standing desk is that it's really long because this was going to be a surface where you could read and flip through a full-size drawing set. So when I brought this home, this is actually incredible amount of real estate to perform design, drawing, and product packaging. 
It used to have two different desks and work surface for all these, but now everything is kind of consolidated into one desk. Sitting on the desk is also an awesome desk accessory, which is also the sponsor of today's video called Hexcal Studio. This is a super high-end workstation that sits on the desk and provides the convenient power and access to electronic devices, professional cable management, and an immersive lighting system, all designed with premium materials and finishes. I've been using it for the past two months and it has definitely become this centerpiece of my table. There are many great features to talk about like the wireless charging, a strong power supply, and the flexible cable management, which has helped me reduce tremendous amount of wiring below my desk. But my favorite feature has to be the immersive lighting feature, which allows me to work much more comfortably in a darker environment, especially for architectural photography work that requires long post-processing time. And I usually have it set on a pretty low color temperature when I'm doing this work. It's definitely a investment, but if you spend a lot of time working from home like me, I think it's worth the cost. So if you're interested, you can use my special link in the description for 10% off. On top of this workstation, I have two widescreen monitors, one of which is calibrated for photo editing and the other one just helps with the day-to-day -day multitask work. And I used to have a pretty crappy webcam for about $30, but the latest Apple iOS allowed me to use my iPhone as a webcam. So suddenly the quality and the perceived production um, in the camera is much, much higher when I have a Zoom meeting. And to support this entire setup, everything is powered by a 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. It's actually the lower spec out of the tier, but it does far more than what I need for a computer for, to do the creative work, including architectural design, photo editing, and video production. There's also a special dock, and that is much needed to connect all the wirings, cables, and cameras printers into a single place so I can just have one cable that's connected to my laptop, which makes detaching my laptop really easy. So I've been running an online Etsy shop for the past three to four years, and it's all done from the comfort of home office. And some of you guys know that I sell my architecture drawings as a on-demand product. So this means I hold very little inventory. And when someone makes a purchase online, it's actually printed right at home from my Canon printer, which can print up to 12 by 16. Although I do need occasional supplies for packaging, shipping, and other materials, all of which can be ordered directly from Amazon. So when I'm ready to mail out customer orders, I use USPS for shipping. And what's great about this is that I don't actually need to go to the post office to physically drop off customer orders. USPS picks up my order directly in front of my porch without having me to ever leave the home. So over the years, this has really been streamlined into a efficient home business. In terms of storage, what used to be the closet space for the bedroom essentially turned into a space where I have two tall shelving systems taking up the space. And in here, I have my electronic equipment, supplies, more camera equipment, and miscellaneous things. Given how small the room is, storage is really a premium, and I have to be very careful about what I bring into the space in the first place. So I don't store excessive supplies, but only the essential. And when things run out, I just restock them online and it typically arrives in a couple of days. Besides the storage closet, I also have two IKEA rolling carts for things that I need more often and a black cabinet for more administrative things. So last but not the least, and in some way, it is the most important thing in this bedroom, which is the bed itself. It's important for us to have a room where my parents can come over or occasional guests can stay. So this office can be quickly turned into a place to comfortably sleep for two. And this is only possible with a Murphy bed system, which is what you're seeing behind me. And this is the only product that I could find within my budget and actually looks decent. And it's actually a backdrop for my filming set. The design of this is really basic and simple. It's basically made from finished plywood, not particularly hard to assemble, no complicated hardware. And when everything is set up, all you have to do is just to take down the bed from the frame and lift it up when you're done. The beauty of this is that there are shelves that are built into the underside of the bed that can be used as a place for decor and it's actually got a pleasant aesthetic to it and it adds a little bit of warmth in this small space. So I hope you found this useful. I've listed everything in the room from furniture, camera to tech in the description below. 
because it's just simply too much to include in one video alone. And if you're interested in any of the technical setups, just let me know in the comments below.